Hey, what's up YouTube? In this video, I'll be showing you how to make the interior and exterior, the inside and outside for my newest suburban house. This is suburban house number seven. I posted this just a few days ago on the channel. And if you want to make the inside and outside of this house, you guys probably know that you have to have the actual house itself built beforehand. So if you want to follow this tutorial along and you don't have the house built, all you have to do is hop either into the card system or the description below. And the only links that you'll find there are links to the tutorial, which will show you how to make this house. It'll only take you about half an hour to make, and it is going to look absolutely spectacular once we finish with it. That is in the card system and in the description below if you haven't made this house and you want to. So let's get cracking with this thing. We're going to make the entire inside of the house first and then we're going to work our way out. So um, for the inside first of all we're going to grab some block of quartz, some virtual planks, we'll also need some polished iron sight, we'll also want to grab some quartz slabs and we will need a load more stuff, probably some torches and what have you, but we're just going to have to grab individual materials as we need them because a lot of these rooms are individualized and it doesn't make sense to grab loads of stuff at once. So once you have each one of these five materials right here and you have made your way to the inside, the first thing that we're going to do is add the floors in the house. These are quite easy to see. So the first floor is in line with the layer of andensite that we have just below the door. So it's obvious where the first floor goes. We've got to make a nice little bed in which we can actually walk around the ground floor on because this house is pretty much on a little platform. So the first floor goes here. The second floor goes exactly where you'd expect it would. It goes right where the house is cut in half by block of quartz. So right where the house is cut in half by block of quartz, about halfway up the house, this is where the second floor goes. And we are going to have a third floor, the attic floor, the roof floor, whatever you want to call it. And this is going to go right where we have the horizontal layer of quartz going all the way around the top of the house. So just where the roof starts, that is where the third floor is going to go. And all of these floors, I am making them out of polished and insight. And I'm going to fill all of these in. I'm not going to do it on recording because it's going to take an unnecessarily long amount of time. And once I've added all the floors in, I'm going to come back and we can talk about individual rooms and stuff like that. So I'll be back in just a second, guys. Let's get cracking on this. Okay, so those are each one of the three individual floors taken care of. We have the ground floor, we have the second floor, and if we could see through walls, which we can in a second, boom, 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 oh, we put on our x-ray glasses, we also have the attic floor taken care of as well. Now, once you yourself have got all of that taken care of, and I imagine you're still working on that, so pause this video. Once you've got all that taken care of, press play, and you can continue along with us. We can now move on to the next bit. So, the next bit is going to be all about the ground floor. We'll take this in stages we'll do the ground floor second floor then the attic if we do anything up there at all so on the ground floor first of all we have to figure out where the walls are going to be on the ground floor so there's a kitchen and a living room on the ground floor so can you see halfway across the house where we have this space in between the two windows on the front and the two windows on the back so this is the left hand side of the house we want to coming out from this bottom middle block Take your birch wood planks and do a row of five birch wood planks coming across the house from this block. That's one, two, three, four, five. Then do a block of quartz next and go up on top of that quartz block by two. Go right by two, connect it to the ground, and then take that block that hits the ground with your birch wood planks, connect it all the way to the back of the house. And now you'll be able to see where the kitchen is. So that's where the kitchen's going to be. On the right just here, and we can make this right now, so on the right just here, this is where the staircase is going to be that will take us all the way up to the second floor. So, where we have this quartz that touches the ground, this corner block, we want to go right of this by two, so that's one and two, this block. We want to place an and site here, and then we want to place upward diagonal and sites until we hit the second floor. So it'll look a lot something like that. And what we can also do is grab some quartz stairs and we can just attach those and sites to the side of the house with quartz stairs. We might have to delete some additional and sites. We can place them back when we can actually walk up and down the stairs. So 
I think we can have one in sight here. Yep, okay, so that's perfect. So now we have the stairs, we can travel in between the two levels of the house. This is going to be the kitchen, and this outer part is going to be the living room. So first, we're just going to take care of this in the corner. So in the corner here, we're going to need some... Where is it? Where are you? We're going to need some dark oak wood slabs. We'll also need some dark oak wood fence, and we will also need some bookshelves. So we want to... On this very front corner of the house, which is where we are, this front corner of the house, take this second birchwood plank block right in the corner, go left of this by one, place two shelves going left, two dark oak wood slabs going left, and then above this shelf you want to leave a gap of one and then do bookshelves just above each one of those actual shelves. And then we want to form a chair in front of this, like, bookshelf that we've made. So we just want to take four dark oak wood fences on the floor like this and then we want to raise up the back two fences like this and this will form like a chair and a chair back that actually looks kind of cool and that's what we're going to have for a chair looks pretty good you know what can we actually improve this can we is it can we use carpet to make this look a little bit better i've never tried this no the answer is no okay you live and learn so that's that corner taken care of. We're now going to take care of the rest of it. So, we have a TV in this room. The TV is made out of dark oak wood planks. We'll also need some oak wood stairs. We'll need some black wool. We'll need some cyan stained clay. We'll need some buttons. We'll also need some... Why can I never find it? We'll also need some oak wood slabs. And we will also need some dark oak wood stairs. On the front left hand side of the house, we want to, starting from this corner block, we want to move in by one, place a dark oak wood slab, or a dark oak wood plank, then we want to go right of it by two of the upside down oak wood stairs, then place a dark oak wood plank on the ground, then we want to place a layer of four black wool on top of everything that we've just placed, we then want to take this left hand black wool block, we want to go up on top of it by three, that's one, two, three, covering the window, go right by three, Come down, fill in the center of cyan stained clay, put buttons on the two bottom corners, and they have a TV. In front of this entire stand, we want to place a row of oak wood slabs in front of this, leaving a gap of one between the TV and the coffee table that we've just made. That's a coffee table. We then, one row away from the coffee table, you know what? Yeah, one row away from the coffee table, we want to have... We want to have a seating area, so that's a little sofa, and you know what, we can turn these sides into, like, sideway stairs. So we want to use dark oak wood stairs for a seating area, and we just want to turn the sides into, like, you know, sofa arms. And it'll end up looking a little something like that, and that's not too bad. We have the TV, we have the coffee table, we have the sofa, we have a little reading area, we have the staircase, and we have the outline for the kitchen. Let's talk about the kitchen, and let me just grab some other materials, and let me just actually grab my plans here real quick. So, get rid of everything that you have. What do we need for the kitchen? We need loads of stuff. Grab yourself some block of quartz. You'll need some uh, block of iron. We'll need some polished iron site. We'll also need some stomach stairs. Grab some, <laughs> grab some oak wood planks. I just laugh because I can never find anything that I'm looking for. Grab some tr wooden trap doors. You'll also need some furnaces. We'll also need a blue wool block, as weird as that sounds. And we will need some. You know what, we'll leave it at that. We, we have just about everything we need. So, what do we want to do now? Starting from this corner inside of the kitchen on the left-hand side of the house, we want to do this sequence of blocks going right. We want to place a block of quartz in the corner, directly next to it, a block of iron, and on top of that iron, an additional iron. Then going right of... This is a fridge, by the way. Then going right of this, we want to do three furnaces coming to the corner. Place an oak wood plank in the corner. And then extend this coming all the way over to the opposite corner of your kitchen. So we want to have this sort of setup. What we can then do is, above the three furnaces, we want to, leaving a gap of one, place three stone brick stairs, upside down stone brick stairs, above the furnaces, and then connect them to the ceiling with a row of polished stand and site coming up from the center upside down stair. What we now want to do is on the right hand side here where we have all of this workspace, we want to starting from the right hand side here, leaving a gap of one between the bottom layer of oak wood planks and what we're going to be placing, leaving a gap of one, we want to do two oak wood planks just above here. We then want to leave a gap of one, do two additional oak wood planks. So we now have 
Uh, we now have cupboards. We're also going to place wooden trapdoors on these to make them look a little bit more like cupboards. So once you have those cupboards, we now want to have a little island in the center of the kitchen. And this is going to be here. So can you see where we have this center furnace? Going right of this, we want to leave a gap of one. Place three oak wood planks here, come in right. Take the center oak wood plank, extend it towards you by one, the blue wall. Then do one oak wood plank either side of the blue wall, and then a row of three oak wood planks there, just in front of the blue wall and the oak wood plank. So you want to have this sort of setup. Place a polished and sight um, next to the dark blue wall, coming towards the back of the house. And what we can now do is add a couple more bits to this thing. So we're now going to get rid of everything, grab black wool and grab white wool. In the floor, we want to have a checkered pattern of black wool and a white wool. You know how kitchens sometimes have them, like, kind of like old style kitchens, admittedly. But we want to have a black and white wool pattern flooring. Now, typically, we would use carpet for this, because of course carpet makes sense, because then we don't have to delete any of the floor or anything like that. But, unfortunately, because of what we're going to be doing after the floor has been administered, there we go, it makes carpet impossible to use. So, once you have the floor taken care of, you can see how to do it. We now want to do this. We want to grab some buttons. We want to grab tripwire hooks. Grab uh, item frames. Grab some, this might look better, grab some lapis lazuli. And we don't need anything else. Place an item frame in front of that quartz block with a lapis lazuli block in front of it. That is supposed to be, I do say supposed to be, supposed to be a washing machine. You could even put like a button on top of it just to go. <laughs> I don't know. Um, on the um, In front of the fridge, we want to place a button in front of the two parts of the fridge. And we want to place a tripwire hook in front of that polished andon site on the island. That's supposed to be a bit of a sink. Fridge washing machine, cooker, storage, kitchen. Perfect. And of course, if you want to, I we did have torches for this, you can light the place up a little bit. The place deserves to be lit up a little bit. Um, you might want to figure out some more permanent lighting. You might want to add some glowstone to the roof or however you want to light this place up. But for now, I think that torches are pretty much satisfactory. I'm going to be throwing them all about the place just because it's important that you guys can see what we've built properly instead of making it look good with the torches. Um, what we're now going to do, we're going to need some virtual planks, we'll need some quartz slabs, and we'll need some red carpet as well. Also red wool. You know what? Just grab red wool. This is what we want to do. So, the kitchen, the front of it, can you see where we have these three center blocks, these virtual planks in this row of five? Place quartz slabs on these. Then, left and right of those quartz slabs blocks, we want to make this sort of formation. We want to raise up those quartz, uh, those virtual planks blocks each by three. That's one, two, three next to those quartz block quartz slabs. And we want to connect them together at the top to form a little window here that's you can see that you can actually see from the living room into the kitchen from. I think that that's a pretty cool feature. We then just want to raise up the rest of the walls with birchwood plank blocks. That's what we want to do. We want to raise up the walls with birchwood plank blocks. This might take a second or two. I mean, you can see this. It's actually a little bit fiddly, and it would have been easier if we would have done this after we actually like made the kitchen and stuff. But you know what? You know what? It doesn't matter. So that's what we want to have. We want to have this. And now what we're going to do is we're going to delete the floor. Now, I wouldn't have made you place andensite for the floor if I knew that this is what we'd be doing. I didn't realize that I wanted to until just now that I wanted to... Oh, crap. Uh, that I wanted to just completely replace the floor with red carpet. So I wanted to use red carpet and that would have been better because it would have meant that nobody has to delete anything. But because of the various things on the floor in here... Um, it's just going to make sense if we actually delete the floor and use red wool instead. The second floor, however, is going to remain primarily polished and insight because unless we do something um, to counter it, if we use, if we start like knocking out parts of the floor upstairs, then it is going to very, very 
quickly show like down here. You'll be able to see it quite easily unless, and I've just thought of this, I'm sure that some some other smarter people might have thought of this before me. Um, the way that you could counter that is you could use like, um, use like slabs. You could use like uh, quartz slabs or stone slabs or something on the ceiling, probably quartz slabs I'd use, to counter the effect of actually using like blocks to colour the floor in from upstairs. And as you can see, it makes the place look a lot brighter. We're also going to need another white wall just so that we can finish off the kitchen here. So there we have the kitchen, we have the living, the living room, we have the stairs to take us to the second floor. So now that we have all of that taken care of, why don't we actually move to the second floor? Why don't we get cracking with this? So we're up on the second floor now and the rooms for the second floor are quite easily laid out. So can you see these windows that we have on the front and the back of the house? Well, you want to take this birchwood plank row that is in between this left window and this middle window and you kind of want to trace along the floor with your birch wood planks and you want to connect one side of the house to the other side of the house we also want to separate the larger side of the house that we've just sectioned off you want to separate it right up the middle so you can see that we have this upside down t-shape here that separates the house so where we have this staircase and we're also going to be placing some white stained glass paint around the staircase just so uh, just so that it looks a little bit nicer. Actually, you know what? White stained glass paint may not be the most fitting material, but a more fitting material, something that would look a bit more like a banister, would be dark oak wood fence. I think that I'd like that more, and I do. Let's also light this place up before we get to work on it. So we're also going to grab some torches and we're just going to throw torches above each one of the windows. And again, we can add more permanent lighting in later if we want. I'm not going to um, because I'm never going to come back to this house. And lighting is subjective. Maybe you want it to be lighter. Maybe you want it to be darker. So you can light it up for yourself and you can use whatever you want. But we're just using torches right now. So we now have to make entrances into each one of these two rooms that we've created. This is a hallway that obviously allows us to travel in between these rooms and what have you and each one of the rooms the entrances to said room are right in the corners of the room so we have like an entrance here for instance in this corner and in the opposite corner we have an entrance here so we just want to have something which should look a little bit like this that's perfect let's take care of the bathroom first of all and then we'll take care of the bedroom so this is a bathroom closest to the back of the house because it's a bit more concealed than the front of the house and um, for the bathroom we're going to need some block of quartz we'll also need some slabs we'll also need some quartz stairs what else do we need we need loads of stuff guys we need some um, uh, but, but, but we need some wooden trap doors. We also need some blue carpet. We're also going to need some tripwire hooks. I don't know if we need any buttons, but we're grabbing some anyway. And we might also need some water. We need a water source, so obviously we need to grab some buckets. Let's talk about this thing. So, oh, I'll tell you what we're going to need as well. We need some hoppers. Cool. Right in this corner here, like next to the wall, the back corner next to the wall, we're going to have a shower. And the shower is going to have a foundation of 3 by 3 with the quartz slabs. That's 1, 2, 3. Like a 3 by 3 foundation with the shower. And we want to raise up this front left-hand corner with the slabs, this front right-hand corner, and then we want to connect it to the back of the wall there. What we now want to do is we... <laughs> We're forgetting a very, very important material for this. We'll get rid of the trapdoors for a second and we'll grab some uh, white stained glass pane. And we want to raise up the outer parts of the shower each by three with the white stained glass pane. And obviously showers, you know, a lot of them are see-through. They have glass in them. That's what this is. And we also want to, and this is going to make having torches here impossible. We then want to put a top on the shower with quartz slabs. So can you see what we've done here? We've made a very, very small room. And uh, we can also get rid of the glass now because we're going to need some virtual planks. And we should probably build this wall. We should pretend that we're Donald Trump. And we should build this wall between the bathroom. And we should build the wall between the bedroom, etc. That we're not going to keep anybody out by building the wall. We just want something to attach the shower to. So there we go. And we want to place a tripwire hook right here. We want to place a trip wire hook right here, and we want to place a hopper, like, right in the center of the shower. And the, the hopper is just supposed to represent, like, a shower head. That's what that's supposed to be, and obviously the trip wire hook is supposed to be a, a um, what do you call them? You know, the thing that you twist, like, a, a tap. It's supposed to be like a tap that you control. That's the shower. 
in this corner, right here, right at the front, we want to have a toilet. We place a block of quartz right in the corner, we place an upside down quartz stairs in front of it, and a quartz stairs on top of it. We place a blue carpet on top of the toilet, then one row away we want to place a block of quartz, we want to place a tripwire hook above it, and we want to place, and this is where the trap doors come in, in, and in front of that we want to place a wooden trap door. That's supposed to be a little bit of a sink. If you want to, you can even place a tripwire hook one row above it, and you can place a blue carpet on top, and then it looks ever so slightly more like a sink. Ever so slightly more. Up to you. Actually, you know what I'd like- ah, we don't have the room for it on this side, but anyway, that's a sink, use whatever version of it you want. On this opposite wall here, we're going to have a little bit of a bath, and we're going to use quartz stairs for the bath, we're going to use upside down quartz stairs. And we're just going to section off these two blocks here, and we're going to fill these two blocks in with water, and we're going to place a tripwire hook right in the corner. That is quite obviously a bath, it's filled with water, ready for bath time. If you wanted to, you could even, and I'd, I didn't even plan this, but I think that it'd, uh, it'd make sense, if you wanted to, you could even place like a flower pot, and that might look like a shampoo or something like that. I don't know, I, I think it kind of does. And um, in this front right hand corner, I actually designed some more storage space. I actually designed um, with the oak wood planks. We have oak wood planks in front of here, and then this also makes sense because this would look kind of, kind of, just kind of look like a toothbrush holder. And if we wanted to, we could then um, add. I keep going the wrong way. We could then add some wooden trapdoors in front of this, and then that also looks like storage. And if you wanted to, on top of that, then you could add a, uh, you know what, blue carpet here. And then you could add um, what we're looking for here. Then we could add maybe a cabinet, like, in front of this. And then if we wanted to, we could also add additional wooden trapdoors in front of this. And I don't know. I, uh... I think that that looks, uh, that looks pretty okay, to be honest with you, and then, um, that's, that's pretty much the bathroom, and if you wanted to, and this does, it requires a little bit more work for us, but if you wanted to, you could, like, tile, I say tile with, like, air quotes here, we could tile the bathroom with blue and white wool, or black and white wool, or maybe we could just, maybe we we'll just use white wool for the floor of the bathroom, we just knock out the floor completely with our white wool here, we only have to knock out the blocks that we can't see, um, or that we can see, we only have to knock out the blocks that we can see, and, um, this will form a bit of a floor for the bathroom, um, quartz block would probably look a little bit better, but most of the things in this bathroom are made out of quartz, so I don't know whether I want that or not, or maybe you could even use, like, the same thing that we use for the kitchen, because I see that people use a lot of this, um, use the same pattern for, like, bathrooms and stuff as well, you could use the same pattern that you used for the kitchen, and obviously you can see under the bath a little bit, so we're going to have to be very careful in deleting these blocks, but um, you can definitely make it look quite nice, and this does require a little bit more work. Um, what I was actually talking about earlier with this is, we can carpet the upstairs in this fashion, but it does mean that we have to apply some slab of sand below, and I think that that makes it look a little bit better, and now that we've completed that room, we can actually just birch wood plank it up, we can throw up the walls, and um, then we can take a little bit of a look at, uh, at the next room. So that is the, whoops, can we destroy that? There we go. And um, there we go, guys. That's the bathroom. I think that that looks pretty good, doesn't it? I think, uh, I think it actually looks really cool. Moving down the hall here. Bedroom. What do we have in the bedroom? We have a bed and little else. So for the bed, we are going to need some oak wood stairs and we will need some dark oak wood stairs. Plus, I believe that we'll need some dark oak wood slabs. And we'll also, you know what, we'll also need beds. And um, right in the back center of the wall, starting from the second block in, coming from whatever side, we want to have um, dark oak wood, dark oak wood planks here. Then to the right of that, we want to have two beds. Then we want dark oak wood planks there. Above the bed, upside down dark oak wood stairs. Then we want to, coming up the side of the bed, we want to have two oak wood stairs coming towards the front. We then want to do dark oak wood slabs, like connecting the ends of the bed, and then we're going to need some oak wood slabs to fill in the bottom of the bed like this. We're then going to add some... 
uh, dark oak, uh, actually we'll use oak wood planks either side of the end of the bed and we're going to place beacons on them. Just because I think that these kind of look a little bit like night lights and I think that they kind of look cool, they kind of look like lamps if, look, if nothing else, I quite like them. And if you wanted to, obviously you could um, make them look a little bit more like storage areas. We could have some wooden trap doors on the outer parts of their um, wooden trap doors here. And um, right at the end of the room here, we're going to have something that looks a little bit like a wardrobe, but I can't get it looking perfect. So um, we're going to need oak wood planks, dark oak wood planks. We're going to need uh, dark oak wood stairs and dark oak wood slabs. Um, right at the bottom here, we're going to have dark oak wood planks. Right at the bottom, we're going to have upside down oak wood stairs, upside down oak wood stairs right in between them. We're going to raise up the sides with dark oak wood planks like this. We're then going to do a layer of dark oak wood slabs right at the top here, connecting the two sides like this. Then we're going to have a dark oak wood slab right in the center. Now, does this look like a wardrobe? Like, c can you tell it looks like a wardrobe? I don't know. And um, we're also going to add some wooden trap doors, like, on randomly about this, to be completely honest with you, like, at the bottom and at the top. And this is just supposed to be something that looks a little bit like storage space. That's pretty much all that's supposed to be. And, of course, now we're now just going to fill the back of the wall up. It is just supposed to, it's just supposed to look a little bit more interesting than just, like, your regular just uh, dark oak wood plank or just oak wood plank structure. That's that's the entire point of it. That's 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 it. So, um, I think it does. It looks like something you'd, you'd keep something on, and that's, that's supposed to be the point. Now... Let's talk about carpet. Um, I want to have red carpet, which means red wool, um, for the hallway. The hallway is going to be red carpet. And again, if I if I knew that I was going to be doing this, and I didn't know that I was going to be doing this, I would have simply told you earlier on. I wouldn't have even told you to make the floors. I would have done this, um, you know, we would have done it now. I wouldn't have told you to make the floors. But... Um, we're having red carpet for the hallway and we'll use a different carpet maybe like a blue maybe we'll use like a dark blue for the and these stairs and there there we go um so we now have red for the hallway and we'll use a dark blue for the bedroom i think um so shall we dark blue no we'll use purple because i do quite like purple and of course we only have to knock out the blocks as i keep saying we only have to knock out the blocks that we can actually see we don't have to knock out all of them because what we're going to be doing in just a moment and i'll show you this um right after we talk about the attic because i'm not going to be showing you how to make the attic i'm just simply showing you how to make the stairs which will take you to the attic and you can use uh, that space for whatever you want you can use it however you want for whatever you want um, but now that we've added the carpet in the bedroom, and I think that that looks pretty cool actually, and I quite like the bedroom, it's quite simple. You could even have a TV here, I didn't think about that, you could have a small TV here if you wanted to. Um, but there we go, we have the second floor taken care of. And um, if you want to know about the attic, it's we're going to use uh, oak planks here, we're going to need some ladders, that's it. Um, right at the end of the hallway here, just one row, you know what, actually, we're going to reposition this because I've, I've actually changed something, so, right in the, does it work in the corner? It doesn't work in the corner, so, this block here, and this is going to cover the window up a little bit, so we might have to find a better position for this, actually, let me see if I can very quickly find a better position for this, um... It's going to be kind of in the middle of everything, but this is actually a pretty decent position for it. I don't know why I knocked this out. Um, we're going to place a row of oak wood planks here. Like, can you see where the stairs are? One row away from this long banister of the stairs, we want to leave a gap of one. And then we want to have a row of oak wood um, planks that connects the floor to the ceiling. We want to do ladders on the outside of the... We want to do ladders on the outside of the oak wood plank row that connects from the floor to the ceiling and we basically just want to have this as transportation to take us into the loft now i haven't actually designed anything for the loft but my thought up here is it'd be if you actually wanted to use this for a survival house you would put whatever you needed up here like crafting tables you'd put whatever areas you want maybe you even want it to be a safe house you want it to be a secret room i haven't designed the interior for the loft because i've only just thought about 
Uh, I've only just thought about this. You could actually utilize this space for something. I don't know what, but you could put something cool up here. And uh, maybe even guest bedrooms if you wanted to. You could have like a loft bedroom. And um, that's like a, that's how you'd get up there with this. You know how some houses have like loft bedrooms, attic bedrooms? That's what that's supposed to be. And uh, something else that we can talk about is um, if you want to break down into the basement, um, you could use some more quartz stairs here in this corner and you could just um, knock through the floor and you could have a little basement area here. So you'll see underneath the house, there's actually like a two by two space just underneath this house. And you can actually walk around it. And if you wanted to, you could break into the garage as well. Not through that way, because that doesn't make any sense. But you could like break into the garage as well. If you wanted to, you could even make a little, a little bit of a walkthrough for the garage. And this is how you could maybe get into the garage. Maybe there's no other way to get into the garage. And maybe this is a secret area. Maybe the garage is where you want to hide a treasure room or something like that. These are just ideas. I only wanted to do the actual functional proper like suburban parts of the house. Like the parts of the house that you would expect to see in like a proper suburban house like the living room the kitchen the bedroom the bathroom I wanted to do those parts but the parts where you can actually customize it and hide it away and make this look like a proper Minecraft house you could utilize a basement you can utilize the uh, garage and you can utilize the loft so those are all hidden away and that's where you can hide your easter eggs hide your chest hide all of the cool stuff that you want let's talk about the floors so can you see the ceiling how it's a bit of a mess now now that we can actually see it well what you may want to do is you may want to use your quartz slabs and you may just want to fill in the ceiling a little bit the only problem here is of course we do make the room look a little bit dark with this but it's not a bad trade-off considering the fact that you don't want your ceiling to look like a weird patchwork ceiling so so I'm using quartz slabs for this, you don't have to, you can use any variety of slab, but um, that's what I'm using and you can see that we are very very slowly covering up all of those very very weird blocks that we use to fill in the floor with for, whoops, what have I done, and um, that we use to fill in the floor with for the second floor, so um, that is the only problem with like knocking through and replacing it but now it looks a little bit better and you can see now on the top of the tv we do have a bit of a problem but we could actually solve this problem by placing like some stone slabs um no we can't no we can't do that okay whatever i thought that we could have filled in the space with stone slabs um i don't know how to solve that dark problem to be honest with you but um yeah can we can we get can we get some torches in here will that work can we get not lily pads <laughs> lily pads don't emit a light source do they can we can we place a torch here? What am I doing? No, here. Why won't it let me place a torch there? Oh, because it's uh, because of there's of course a slab there. Hmm. I don't know about that. You would have to do something to counteract that, but I'm not sure what you would do to that exactly. I will leave you to figure out how to solve the darkness problem that we've now caused with the TV. But that's the interior of the house, that's the inside of it. You might want to put doors on the stuff, but that's that's pretty much the inside of the house. And you may also have to um, knock out this slab here. And there we go, we can now actually walk in between the two floors. So, that's the inside of the house. Let's take a look at the outside of the house now, since we've spent enough time talking about the inside. The inside's looking pretty nice now. You can actually see inside it quite a bit, it looks kind of cool. So, the outside of the house, we're going to want to grab ourselves to do this, and I'm just moving my plans once again. We're going to need, as usual, some polished and insight. We'll need some cyan stained clay. We'll need some block of quartz. We'll also need some, where is it? We'll need some birchwood fence. And we'll need some flowers. We'll need some azure bluet, or however they're pronounced. And we'll need some aliums. I believe. Aliums? Alium? <laughs> ET flowers. And we'll need some uh, oak saplings. We'll also want to grab some. Where are they? I never find these. We'll need some bone meal. Um, for the back part of this house, just realized we have the back part, back part of the house, of course. We'll need some. Uh, we'll need some oak planks and we'll we will need a couple more things later on But you know what we'll grab those as we need them. So let's talk about the outside Where we have this garage We want to take the left and right hand sides of the garage and in the floor where we have these quartz blocks of the two front corners of the garage We want to knock out of the floor coming out in front 11 blocks So one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven and the opposite side as well I'm quite confident that that first row is right So I'm just going to match it up with that first row once you've knocked out those two rows, place polished and insight in there. So you just want to place polished and insight in between the 
two layers of you guys know what. You want to replace the blocks with polished andensite. Um, you then want to knock out the area between your two rows of andensite and you want to place cyan stained clay. So knock out the entire area in between your two rows of andensite. Knock it out. Go on, knock it out. Mama told you to. And you want to place... That's a song, by the way. Mama said knock you out. You want to knock out this area and you want to replace it with cyan stained clay. You might even want to uh, knock out the little area underneath... Um, the quartz stair that we have for the garage and you might want to replace that with like andensite or something else and then just replace this area with cyan stained clay um, this is going to form a bit of a road that's what this is it's a little bit of a road it's a bit of a drive I should say it's a drive taking you towards the garage and that's exactly what we're after it looks quite nice so this will just take a second or two to do and boom perfect so once you've got that taken care of, you then want to take out your block of quartz. And you want to take this very end andensite that we have right here, and we want to knock out, and let me just count this just to make sure that this is correct. We want to knock out one, two, three, four, five, six blocks going right of this grass. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we want to knock out an area around the house. And we want to maintain a distance of five at all times away from the house. So, can you see where we have the end of the house here? Well, we want to go right of this and we want to maintain a distance of five blocks. So, that will mean a row of six. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we just want to, again, at all times leave a distance of five away from the house. So, you might have to count it as you go around. That's one, two, three, four, and five. And you just want to knock out this area. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to re be replacing this. And let me just one, two, three, four, five, and then knock out this block, connect this together. We want to dig a trench that leaves five blocks away from the house at all times. And we're just also going to connect this all the way over. Are we going to connect it all the way over? I don't want to say things and then not do them. Yeah, very kind of. So we want to dig out this trench, but what we also want to do is where we have this entrance of the house, we want to take each one of these andensites next to this stone brick stairs that touches the floor, and we want to extend these as far out as the house is going to come, so as far out as the house is going to come, so right at the edge of the drive, and we want to fill in these two rows with polished andensite. So we just want to fill them in with polished andensite like this. And then we can connect the trench that is going around the house together at the end of the path, and we can also connect it to the end of the drive as well. So can you see what I'm talking about? We've maintained a distance of five going all the way around the house like this, and we also have the entrance here, and we're also going to have to grab some grass block just to um, get rid of that. There we go, get rid of that hole there. What we're now going to do is we're going to place block of quartz inside of the trench. So going all the way around the inside of the trench that we've just dug out, we want to place quartz block. It's, it's quite easy, it just takes a little bit of time. As a matter of fact, I think that the entire outside of the house is quite easy. I don't know whether I'm making it difficult by the way that I'm explaining this or not, but um, this is how things are going to go. This is how it looks. So we just want to maintain the distance of five going all the way around, replace it with quartz, and then I'll tell you what we're going to do after this. On top of the quartz, just the quartz, exclusively the quartz, we want to now place a layer of birch fence. So we just want to go all the way around and we do have a few more things to do So there is quite a bit more digging out But there's actually not that much left to the outside of the house So we're going to dig out two more paths going around the house So it's actually one path But we do have to dig out two rows two trenches going around the house and we also have to plant some flowers We also have a little bit of a patio plus we have a tree to we, we actually have two trees We have two trees to plant and and um, if you wanted to, and this isn't in the tutorial, um, you could also mess with the garage a little bit. So that's the fence going all the way around the property. What we're now going to do is, um, on the front of the house, can you see where the, like, can you see where the stairs touch the floor? Well, we want to connect those stairs to the driveway with a little bit of a trench. So digging into the ground, we want to connect the stairs to the driveway with a bit of a trench, and we want to place polished down inside in it. But we also want to go left of this, and maintaining a distance of one 
away from the house. So we just want to be on the second row going all the way around the house. Just leaving a gap of one going all the way around. We want to dig all the way around. And we want to wait until we get all the way to the back of the house where we have like this back right hand corner of the house. That's what that is. And we want to connect it to that. And then we just want to place andensite in its place. And this is just going to form part of the flower bed. So that's where one of the flower beds are going to go. Right next to the house we're going to have some white, what are they called? White, that's both meal. <laughs> some azure bluettes. That's what we're going to have inside that row. But then one row away from this so coming outwards where we have these rows of free grass we want to take this middle one and we kind of just like want to cut this row of three in half and we just now want to dig a trench all the way going around inside of this middle row and this is going to form part of the path so um, obviously this is now going to form a path going all the way around the house and we are going to connect this all the way round, round at the back here so it's just going to connect right at the back and this is going to form a little bit of a path so you can see where it connects it forms kind of like a big L shape or like a hockey stick or well, however you want to describe it really it forms that sort of shape and um, it connects together like that and oh we also have to fill this row in and what we're now going to do is we're going to fill the inside of those flower beds that first one the one that's closest to the house we're going to fill this in with the azure bluettes or whatever is that french i don't know i've got no idea but that's what we're filling this in with and then we're filling the outer flower bed which is this one and we might even want to like connect this part all the way to the back fence like this and we're now going to fill the outer part the outer flower bed in with aliums or alliums i believe this allium but honestly it's a little bit funnier to me to uh, pretend it's alien because of course that sounds a little bit like aliens uh, I don't know I'm immature what can I say so it wants to look a little bit like that and I think that that actually looks quite nice and what we can now do is we can uh, get rid of oh god we we have so many but I'm gonna dump grass blocks and I'm going to grab some uh, stone bricks I'm going to fill the path in here the center of the path in here with stone bricks so we can now walk up to the house and that looks a little bit nicer and if you wanted to I actually didn't do this on the original house we can fill this path in if we want I don't know if this will look better with stone bricks as well so instead of just having an empty path going around the house I don't know if this looks better or not we might want to have that does that look better i actually think it does maybe look a little bit better but it does take away a little bit of the green so i'm not sure i think i might keep it just grass block but we have a couple of trees to plant we have one tree right at the front center right on the front right hand corner of the house right next to the drive which is here so i'm just going to place an oak sapling and i'm going to grow it with bone meal that's going to be like right on the front corner and right on the back right hand corner in a rough same spot we're going to place an oak wood sapling here right in the corner we're going to place bone meal here just going to grow it a little bit just so that we have another tree on the back right hand corner as well and what we're also going to have directly behind the garage and let me just have a look here directly behind the garage we're going to have a little bit of a patio area so one row away from the back of the garage but maintaining just about the entire distance of the back of the garage can you see here one row away from the garage starting from the left hand side of the garage coming all the way up to where we have this birch wood we're going to have a little bit of a patio area and it's going to look a little something like this it's going to be in distance i mean you can see how wide it is but it's going to be like four blocks fixed so like one two three four and we're just going to fill this in with polished and site and then we're just going to need a little bit of a patio table and we're just going to use oak wood um oak wood stairs for this and we're also going to use for the tables like never brick fence so that's a little bit of a patio area we're going to get rid of that and we might even grab a furnace as well grab a furnace and uh we're going to need some never brick fence and we will need as i said where are they some oak wood stairs um we'll use the furnaces to plant uh, plant this table so um, the table actually goes right right slap bang in the center of this thing and it just uses well that was stupid of me wasn't it of course that would happen what I, why am i stupid so um we're just going to have like a little very small table in here i don't know what i expected from that and um, we're just going to have a small table comprised of like upside down oak wood stairs uh like this and as you can see it looks a bit like a table and then we're just going to have a never brick fence on um, either side of the table and it's just the same chair that we made inside and uh, you'll see that the chairs actually sit perfectly either side of the table and if you want to you could have like a furnace like right in this back corner and that's kind of like a bit of a barbecue or something you could even um you could even place something around that area we don't actually have enough room so it's just going to be a bit of a bit of a patio area there as well so we'll just get rid of all of that we'll grab some grass block we'll come all the way to the front here we'll uh 
we'll undo the stone bricks that we placed inside of this little bit of a um, we'll play some stone. We'll place grass where we place stone brick because I I do like the color a little bit more. And um and that's pretty much the house. That's that's the house inside and outside, pretty much in a nutshell. Looking quite nice. Looking quite like a suburban house. Um, why don't we also put some doors on this place? I'm going to use uh, dark oak wood uh, doors for most of this. And why don't we have a bit of a walk around placing doors as we go? So, this is the house. And also, by the way, guys, I did design a car to go in the driveway, and I might just show you a still. Of the car right at the end of this. I'll talk about the car at the end, but I did also design a car that would go in front of the house. It kind of looks like an old style muscle car with like a racing stripe up it. So, um, we walk right up this path here to get into the house. We can walk up these stairs and we have a little bit of a deck area up front. We have a bit of a porch. It's nice. You could even place some stairs on here just to, well, maybe even like make some sort of like uh, one of those like bench swings. That'd be cool. And um, this is the porch area. We're going to place a door like here. I know that it's going to be reversed, but I'm um, going to place a door here. Shall we, shall we place it there and then walk in? Perfect. And then as we come into the left, it's a little bit dark in here. We have a TV. We have a set area. We have a coffee table. On the right, we have a little bit of a seating area where we can read and do other stuff. We have a set of stairs which takes us up to the second floor but we also have a kitchen we also have like a viewing window where we can collect food or look into the kitchen talk to whoever's working in there um in the kitchen we have like an island we have uh we have a washing machine we have some uh we have a fridge we have um we have a cooker we have some cupboards we have all sorts in here oh can you see up here as well can you see we also need to fill in the floor this is why i came back in here and we also have to fill in the floor for the kitchen um or the ceiling i should say and we're just going to use quartz block for this um i don't think that we'll run into any darkness issues in the kitchen here I don't think we'll run into any darkness issues in the kitchen like we did the living room though because there's nothing that tall in here other than the cooker which uh, doesn't conflict. So that actually looks a little bit better. So we have everything we need in the kitchen. We have storage space, we have a sink, we have um, washer, cooker, fridge, everything that we need in here and we might even want to place another door. Um, we also have a little a little secret staircase here which takes us all the way down into the basement. Plus we have a way to get into the garage. I think that this could be utilized as, I don't know, either like a big giant secret area, a big giant secret space, or it could be utilized as just a storage area or something like that. I think that that'd be very cool. Um, as we walk up to the second floor, as we come up these stairs here, we also want to put a door on the bathroom. We have a bathroom, we have a shower, we have a bath, we have a place to like clean your teeth, and we have some more storage space, like a medicine cabinet. We have a toilet, we have a sink, we have everything that we need in here. And we even have a set of stairs or a set of they're not stairs of course we have a ladder to take us into the attic we don't have any we don't have anything up there but that would be excellent as storage space as well as we move down the hallway we also have a bedroom very colorful looking bedroom we have a bed we have a couple of storage spaces we have some night lights and we have a big giant wardrobe looking place to keep your shoes slash vanity area I, d I don't know i don't know if you wanted to we could also place like something that would look resemble a mirror maybe like an item frame and maybe like um some white stained glass like maybe um, can we can we place one there? Does that kind of look like a mirror? I don't know, kinda. And um, this is the bedroom, and that's the inside of the house. I mean, there's only four rooms, really, only four actual proper functional rooms. But um, you could definitely utilize the space in this house. There's loads and loads of untapped space that you could definitely use it for a survival house if you wanted to. And that's the inside. And of course, on the outside here, I'm not going to walk across this. We have um, we have the garage here, and there is actually going to be a car here if you guys want to see a tutorial for that. And we have on the outside, we have a lovely path that goes all the way around. We have two layers of flowers. We have a nice little bit of a patio area back here, right behind the garage. And we have a couple of trees, some nice some nice little plant life, and it, it just looks nice. It just looks very suburban, looks very pretty. And um, that's the house in a nutshell. And talking of the garage, let me just show you what the original version of this house looks like, just so that I can show you um, what the actual, like, what the car looks like. So give me a sec. So this is what the actual car looks like, which would fit in nicely with the driveway. I decided not to include this in the tutorial just because I didn't want to add an extra amount of time to this. This has actually taken a lot longer than I expected that it would. And this has had like an extra 10, 15, maybe even 20 
90 minutes to the tutorial. But if you guys want to see something very similar to this, and I might even tweak it a little bit to make it look a little bit more like a suburban car because it kind of looks like a kind of like an old-fashioned race muscle car or something like that, or at least as close as you can get to it in Minecraft because, of course, you are dealing with square blocks. Um, I think it makes a nice addition to the driveway, and it would also then make sense if you wanted to make this car. It makes sense to then add like a street in front of the house, like we could have one, two, three, four, and then we could have like science stain clay, and then we could have oh. Would it, would it be? No, yeah, it'd be an insight. And uh, we could then, like, add a street in front of the house. And imagine if you had a street in front of the house, then we could connect all of the houses together quite logically. Then we could have loads of suburban houses connected to each other, and especially if they all had driveways, they all had cars, they all had nice little outsides like this. It actually looked quite nice. You might be able to imagine how this street would look, and you might be able to imagine how everything would connect together. And then you could add, like, a park in between the houses, and you could add, like, children's play areas, and you could add, like, tennis courts to people's back gardens, basketball courts. You could have a whole little suburban community all built around all the builds that I have on the channel, and I think that they'd all flow quite nicely. But... That is the inside and outside tutorial of the Suburban House. Let me know on the car because I'm not sure whether you guys will like the car or not. I think it looks kind of cool, but um, as you break it down, maybe you don't like it. I don't know. But um, let me know whether you like the tutorial for this. Let me know whether you liked the inside and the outside of this house being built, whether it helped you at all, whether you like it, whether you could make any improvements to it. Would you like me to see would you like to see me do other houses, including the insides and outsides? Maybe maybe you want some ideas for yourself and maybe you want some more suburban houses. Let me know. Whatever you want to see me make down in the comment section, leave suggestions down there and maybe we can get something done. Thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy this tutorial, please give it a like, give it a favorite, give it a share. I'd honestly appreciate you doing all of those things. I really, really would. I put a lot of effort into this. Not only the house, not only the inside, not only the outside, not only the car, but absolutely everything here. Thank you very much for watching. Comment down below. Check out the car system for... I might leave a couple more things, but primarily the tutorial for this actual house. Before we've messed with the inside and the outside, that will be in there. Um, anything else, probably not. Subscribe if you haven't already. We do loads of stuff around here. You might even be able to tell what we've done around here. And, uh, I mean, just, just looking around, you might be able to see what the channel's about a little bit. Maybe, maybe you want to check out a current world tour and you, you might see, uh, you might see what we get up to. But thank you very much for watching. Like, favorite, share if you wouldn't mind. Subscribe if you haven't already. Comment down below and I'll see you in the next video. <laughs>